Thank you, Marcella. It is 6.53. It's time for my final thought. What's the letter of the day? Oh, Gio says it's L. It was at a dinner party in 1966 that a couple of friends, TV producer Joan Gans Cooney and psychologist and educator Lloyd Morissette were discussing the way the young children seemed to soak up every idea and tune that they saw and heard on the small screen. Out of that conversation came a question. What if there was a show that was as good or better than Saturday morning cartoons? But instead of using catchy jingles and music to sell toys and cereals, it would sell education. Letters, numbers, shapes, concepts like near and far. Could it help prepare children for school? Could it help them grow and thrive, even if just a little bit? It was from this conversation and subsequent meetings with child psychologists from Harvard and other institutions, as well as seminars and the hiring of a brilliant puppeteer from the University of Maryland named Jim Henson, that another question was asked in a catchy jingle in November of 1969. Can you tell me how to get, how to, get to Sesame Street? You just heard it in your head, didn't you? It's been 50 years since Sesame Street debuted, and in that time, they've stayed, in the words of CEO Jeffrey D. Dunn, relentlessly true to the mission of helping kids grow smarter, stronger, and kinder. Mission accomplished, which is why it's the first television show to receive the Kennedy Center honors. Sesame Street was the original safe space, the original comfort food for all of us. For many, the one thing that we could count on in a rapidly changing world. Because of the brilliance of Henson and his team, we became friends with a green monster who lived in a trash can, a singing frog who would occasionally cover the news, two friends and roommates who, while they argued a lot, always worked out their differences, and a wide-eyed eight-foot-tall bird who asked the questions that were on every child's mind, and the music. Over the years, every great musical act you can think of found their way to Sesame Street, from Stevie Wonder to Johnny Cash to B.B. King to Patti LaBelle to Miss Lena Horne. Forget Broadway or Carnegie Hall, you weren't real if you didn't make an appearance on the street. Do yourselves a favor and YouTube Paul Simon singing Me and Julio if you want to know what spontaneous joy looks like. It wasn't all fun and games, though. Over the years, they haven't been afraid to tackle the big subjects, like the death of shopkeeper Mr. Hooper, giving children through Big Bird a lesson in processing grief. They've helped children handle divorce, a parent being incarcerated, military family members being deployed, autism. And with the show going global, they've shown us girls going to school in Afghanistan and a South African puppet dealing with the stigma of HIV. This honor has been well earned and the recognition is well deserved. The show has changed the world and I can't imagine living in one without a Sesame Street. We're gonna continue this conversation online. You guys have a beautiful Tuesday. Get on up DC.